So we're going to talk about weight fluctuations. Weight fluctuations are not fun for anyone. They can make you really want to pull your hair out. They can make you feel super demoralized and demotivated. So I just want to set some expectations around normal weight and how normal weight fluctuations and how your body reacts to different, uh, you know, foods and medications and stuff like that. So you can see that some of this is normal. Some of this is not something that you have to freak out about. Some of this is just part of being a human who is, who is constantly changing from day to day. So hopefully it can give you a little peace of mind when you see that scale bump up. So just a reminder, your weight will go up and down on your weight loss journey. So yes, it's a weight loss journey, but your weight will go up at times. This is normal. This is expected. I want to just get ahead of, um, you thinking that it's just this beautiful, magical weight loss, you know, perfect trajectory downwards because it's not, um, life is going to be, you know, thrown at you in different ways. And it's not always going to be, you're not going to be perfect every day. Your body is going to change change. And so sometimes it's going to go up. The scale will go up and that is okay. We're looking at the bigger picture. So here's an example of what you might think weight loss is going to look like. And then here's reality. So you see, we started up here and we're still way down here. That's amazing progress, but guess what? The weight went up here. The weight went up here. It wasn't all rainbows and butterflies the entire time. And that's normal. This is okay. And I want you to just get this in your head now before this actually happens and you start beating yourself up because this is going to happen. It's just a matter of how you're going to respond to it. So I want to preface by talking about some qualities of successful clients. So over the years, these are some of the things that we have outlined and identified as qualities of clients who are most successful in our program. The ones who really make the lifestyle change, really make the lifelong changes with their health and their weight. These are the qualities that they have. And it ties in again to how you respond when things go poorly is really a determinant of how successful you're going to be in, in the program, but just also in general. So fluid expectations. So understanding that thing, or sorry, flexible expectations. So understanding that things can change. You may have had this goal of, you know, 10 pounds in 10 weeks, and maybe that didn't happen and that's okay. So resetting expectations, not letting yourself get beat up or, or demoralized when something doesn't go exactly as you plan, you have flexible expectations that can change as you can, as you continue on in your health journey, as you grow in your health journey mental stamina. So along those same lines, when things like this happen, do you have the mental stamina and capacity to keep pushing forward? Even when it feels like things aren't working, even when it feels like you're doing all the right things and you're not seeing the results, do you have the mental stamina to keep going and knowing that it's about the long-term game rather than the short-term results? In in general, we see people who... <coughs> take ownership and responsibility as ones who are the most successful. So people who don't let excuses get in the way, they don't let life get in the way. Yes, things are going to come up, but they don't let that be a reason that they can't meet their goals on a weekly basis. You know, they don't use excuses of why they, you know, can't get to the gym or show up for a call or things like that. People who take ownership and responsibility are the ones who are absolutely the most successful in all areas of their life. Clients who are most successful also believe in progress over perfection. This is a mantra that we teach a lot. And if you can get this in your head and truly uh, latch onto this, this is going to carry you through some hard times, progress over perfection. If you can remember that and really embody that, that will get you really far. And then similar to everything I just mentioned, bouncing back. So people who don't let a setback hold them back for good, even if it's a big setback, you know, my whole family got COVID, you know, my kid broke his leg, you know, even big things that might set you back for a couple weeks or a month, they still bounce back. They don't let anything take them down during this time. So these are the, the qualities of successful clients. And I wanted to spend time on this first, because all of these mindsets and approaches play into what we're talking about with, with weight fluctuations. So one thing important thing to remember when you see a weight fluctuation is that an extra 300, 
sorry, 3,500 calories has to be consumed to gain a pound of fat. So a lot of times people will see weight fluctuations, you know, within just 24 hours or a very short amount of time. And we asked, Hey, did you, did you actually consume an extra 3,500 calories? Chances are you did not. And so that will help you reassure yourself. Okay. I didn't actually gain all this weight, all this fat. It's something else going on. So 3,500 extra calories. Did that really happen? Probably not. So then why does the scale go up? If it's not that what's going on? So I have two different lists, um, to go through here. So the good thing is there are a lot of different pieces going on here. So if, if your weight does bump up, it's okay. There could be a lot of different reasons. And that's what we're going to go over now. So increase in stress. This is increase in stress and decrease in sleep. So changes in stress and sleep, I would say are two of the biggest one. That's why I put them first. Um, both of these are going to throw off your circadian rhythm. Both of these are going to throw off your, you know, digestive system, your normal digestion. Maybe you're, um, you know, you get from those, you get constipated, things slow down overall. Um, you're going to have higher levels of cortisol, which makes you want your body want to, uh, hang on to more fat. So sleep and stress are two really, really big ones. If you've had a, a dramatic change in those two, you wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be surprising surprising for the weight to go up. Constipation is a big one. So constipation, we have a whole module on this. So if you want to dive into deeper about what might be going on there, but remember constipation is anything, um, more than not having a bowel movement for one day. So if you're having a, a bowel min- movement every two or three days, that's constipation. And guess what? That's that, that extra volume is sitting in your gut. And that is going to, um, that's going to cause the scale to go up sometimes. Too much or too little water. Um, This is a really common one and it goes hand in hand with the next one, salt, water retention, bloating. These are really, really common reasons that the scale will go up. So make sure you're not drinking too much water and over hydrating, but also not too little dehydration can also play a role. And then recent heavy workouts, typically like a weightlifting type of workout, or if you're really sore, your body has more lactic acid that can drive up the scale. And then certain medications, especially those that are like antidepressants, SSRIs, things like that can cause changes in uh, fluid retention, water retention, things like that. And then page number two here. So increase alcohol. If you've had, if you were drinking a couple drinks the night before and you get on the scale, it's not going to be surprising if the weight goes up because what happens is alcohol slows down digestion overall because your body's so, um, focused on getting the alcohol out, the toxin out. So it slows down digestion of everything else. So we might retain more fluid water. Um, you also just might be having more sodium in general and more heavy foods and stuff like that. So increased alcohol intake wouldn't be surprising if the scale goes up the next day. I think a lot of us are familiar with being on your cycle or around the the times of menopause, seeing changes in hormones and fluid retention there. And that is mostly because of progesterone. So progesterone, progesterone is responsible for a lot of things, but one of them is the, um, it it has a role in relaxing the lining of the gut. And so when that happens is, or when that does happen, more water will come into the gut because of that relaxation of the gut muscles. So progesterone and changes of progesterone over the cycle. Also estrogen can play a role too, but changes and fluctuations in hormones. Absolutely. You'll see that happen. I think we're all familiar with that more carbs than normal. Uh, if you had a really, really heavy carb day the night before, then you get on the scale. Won't be surprising if that goes up, um, because those carbs get stored as extra glycogen. And so you can see some weight increase there. And then if your timing of your meals was disrupted. So again, that circadian rhythm getting disrupted is going to throw off the scale. Your body really likes to, to be in homeostasis and it really likes to be on a regular schedule. And then if you're sick, if you're sick, obviously a lot of things are off in your body and you can see weight go up. So it's normal to see 
about five pound range of fluctuations on any given day. And I, I know that's a really big range, especially when you're just trying to lose a pound or two, but this is absolutely normal. And so here is a diagram showing you where those five pounds of fluctuation come, can come from. So sweat, um, urine, feces, eating, drinking, metabolizing, things like that. All of those are going to change throughout the day. And I think most of us know that because if you get on the scale first thing in the morning, and then you get on the scale, like at the very end of the day, you'll see a jump up, jump up a few pounds. So we know our body fluctuates. So don't beat yourself up when it goes the other way. Um, because we know all of these things are happening on a daily basis. So what to do when the scale goes up, what happens? You see that number, you are just, your, your heart sinks. You're just so disappointed and bummed. You want to just like throw the scale at the wall. Here are some things to do instead. So first things first, make sure you have the scale that we recommend. Um, it's in the onboarding section and it talks, uh, or the scale is a biometric, what is it called? Nope. Sorry. Bio impedance scale. And it looks at different metrics beyond just weight. So it's looking at like your fat mass, your muscle mass, if you can even see your fluid status. So you can see maybe where other levers are changing. Other metrics are changing beyond just the scale number. Cause the scale, the weight on the scale encompasses so many different things. And this helps break down the composition of your body and just different metrics. And you could see which of those metrics are changing. So did you actually gain muscle? Maybe did you gain water weight. Maybe it'll show you there. It's only $20. It's absolutely worth every penny. Make sure you're weighing at consistent times. I think this goes, um, without saying, but don't weigh yourself in the morning one time and then weigh yourself in the evening the next time. And even if you, and it goes beyond that. So you want to make sure you're weighing yourself at the same time, ideally same cool, you know, clothes. Don't be wearing like sweaters one time and then like nothing the next time. Also make sure you're consistent in the fact that it's after you go to the bathroom and before you eat breakfast, that's the ideal time. So make sure you're consistent in all of those different variables and make sure you're using the same scale. Don't, don't weigh once at the doctor and once at home, you're going to see different numbers and don't keep weighing yourself. So say you see it go up and you're like freaking out. Well, don't just keep weighing yourself to wait for it to like waiting for it to go down. You will drive yourself nuts. Take a break maybe for a week or even two weeks and then come back. We're trying to look at the big picture, not the day-to-day -day fluctuations. Make sure you're doing your measurements. This is a much better indicator of how your body composition is changing. So don't skip those measurements. They can be a great validation of the progress you're making. Also, when this happens, make sure that you're looking at those non-scale wins. I know it can be really defeating to see the number on the scale go up, but don't let that take away from the fact that maybe you were having a really great week. You felt like you had more energy. You were getting better sleep. You were drinking more water. Don't let the scale invalidate all of those other amazing areas that you're seeing progress. A big thing is, um, not to throw in the towel. So don't let the number on the scale affect your routines and choices moving forward. Don't just say, screw it. I had a bad, um, you know, I had a bad day. And so now I'm just going to have a bad week. Don't let your routines and choices get, um, don't let those get in the way of you moving forward. Don't let the scale affect what you're going to do for the rest of the week. Remind yourself of your original goals. So just circle back to why you're doing this in the first place, why it's so important that can help you with that mental stamina component. And then obviously reach out to your coach for support. This is what we're here for. We see this happen all the time. You are not the first person to have your weight go up and we are, we are more than ready to help and more than happy to give you encouragement and motivation and help you push through with that. You know, like I said, that mental stamina, just to get through the frustrating times. So last piece of encouragement here is that successful clients don't let the scale dictate their commitment. They do not let the scale get in the way of all the things they know they need to do. You know, they don't let that get in the way of them doing their one, three, five, doing their workouts, sending their food photos, showing up for calls. They don't let it dictate their commitment. They don't see the scale go up and then they just throw in the towel. 
successful clients push through. They know this is just normal. They know it's a up and down trajectory, but at the end of the day, it is more down than it is up. And that is what we're looking for. We're looking for the overall trend over weeks and months. This is the point you want to be at. Don't worry about what it looks in the meantime. It's not going to look like this. It's going to look more like this. And here is the destination. And it doesn't matter what happens in between. It just matters the big picture in the long run. So hopefully this is a little encouragement. I know it's frustrating. I totally get it. You feel like you're doing the right things. You feel like you're doing all the hard work. It is going to pay off if you just stay consistent.